Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Um, so afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm uh, joined here today by the Under Sheriff uh, Bill Cooley and uh, Captain uh, Jim Walsh um, uh, from the Sheriff's Department here. I want to thank them, obviously. Uh, uh, you know, first and foremost, thank them for you know an outstanding investigation here, which is continuing, uh, and their help. Uh, also, it's my understanding that the uh, New York State Police uh, also responded to the scene. Uh, of the incident as well, and I want to thank them uh, again. So, we had obviously a, um, an alleged uh, unfortunate uh, situation that occurred uh, on Wednesday evening um, at approximately uh, 5 o'clock in the late afternoon, going into the evening there on December 13th uh, on uh, West Blood Road uh, in the town of Elma, New York, where we normally don't see uh, homicides occurring. Um, a a 62-year-old female uh, who was uh, uh, living in the home uh, with a 61-year-old uh, uh, male uh, that were apparently boyfriend and girlfriend had been living in the home for for some time uh, uh, lost her life uh, that that evening. The um, the defendant, 61-year-old Frank Letterio, L I T T E R I O of Elma. Uh, who apparently uh, owned the home there on West Blood Road uh, has been arraigned uh, about 10 minutes ago on one count of murder uh, in the second degree. Uh, the allegation is that Mr. Letario, uh used a crossbow uh, and uh, shot uh, the victim uh, with the arrows from the crossbow uh, and, uh, and killed her uh, that late afternoon on December 13th. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, defense counsel uh, who showed up at the arraignment for ECMC at ECMC this afternoon uh, waived uh, time. Uh, normally we have to um, obviously uh, run a felony hearing within six days of someone who was held without bail. Uh, Judge Bohr ordered him held without bail. And uh, like I said, as you all know, normally we have six days to run a felony hearing, but the defense counsel waived time, so that six days is now uh, not uh, hanging over our head, and there's a return date now of January 29th. Uh, he is um, being held currently at ECMC. I'll let the under sheriff talk about a little bit more about uh, the investigation, uh, what the allegations are that happened at the household, uh, and uh, at some point, he will get subsequently uh, released from ECMC uh, and transferred down to the holding center. Sure. Thank you, District Attorney. Uh, I thank everyone for being here today. Uh, Sheriff Garcia is in attendance at the uh, uh, Police Academy graduation. We're, we're happy to report that uh, we're bringing six new deputies into the Police Services Division, and uh, they, uh, they all hail from our Jail Management Division, so we're, we're glad to see that happen today. Um, like the district attorney said, on uh, Wednesday at about 5 p.m., our deputies responded to a 9-11 complaint um, requesting a welfare check on West Blood Road. Uh, upon arrival, they encounter 61-year-old uh, Frank Letario, and uh, he was uh, exhibiting signs of self-inflicted wounds. He had uh, a laceration to his neck, um, puncture wounds to his chest, and uh, injuries to his wrists. Immediately thereafter, they encounter the victim, 62-year-old Jill Harris, on a couch in the living room. She was deceased from arrows that were shot from a crossbow. The autopsy re revealed that she had been struck three times by arrows, once in the abdomen, once in the face, and once in the chest. So when you consider what it takes to, to load and fire a crossbow, uh, there's a process to it. So this was uh, you know, clearly a, a deliberate actions. Based upon the, uh, the scene investigation, it's believed that the victim had been deceased for a while, although it's difficult to discern exactly how long. Um, detectives are still working through and, and trying to uh, establish a, a timeline. Um, our deputies, with the assistance of the state police, uh, secured the scene, cleared the house, and summoned first aid, who subsequently transported uh, Frank Letario to, uh, to ECMC for treatment for his injuries. 
Uh, Erie County Sheriff's deputies um, have been detailed to him ever since this event occurred on Wednesday. Uh, like the DA said, uh, uh, today he was charged with murder second. I want to express my condolences to Jill Harris's family, and I want to commend the excellent work of uh, Captain Jim Welch here and his team of detectives and all the deputies and troopers that responded, and uh, District Attorney John Flynn's talented team of prosecutors that worked on this case. So uh, with that, we'll, uh, we'll open it up for, for questions. You ever handled a case where a murder weapon was a crossbow? No, that's the first one. I mean, Billy might have been his time at BPD. I, was, I mean, no, I was uh, with the homicide unit for quite a while and uh, never encountered this one. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen it. I mean, it's a, uh, um, you know, a crossbow is a rather unique weapon. I mean, um, you know, there, there's, you know, crossbow has a like a trigger mechanism to it. It's not like a Robin Hood bow and arrow. It's a, it's a pretty powerful weapon, uh, and you have. Uh, you have three arrows uh, that were um, that that were uh, that were used in this uh, incident, and you know, again, I, I want to commend um, and the, the sheriff's department, the deputies who showed up there. Um, not, and not only do I want to commend them, but I want to, um, you know, uh, obviously uh, offer my, you know, uh, ho hope that they're okay for what they saw, because it was obviously a horrific scene. Is there a possibility that he was like having some kind of a mental breakdown? And um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll have to we'll have to obviously explore that in, in, in the in the course of the investigation. I mean, you know, we'll uh, you know, right now we're um, we're trying to investigate and piece together, like first of all, why did this happen? Um, what what led up to this? Did, did they get into an argument beforehand? Uh, did they have any kind of issues that that may have caused this problem? So, what you do is you start at the beginning to go back as far as you can to see what leads up to this. Uh, you hopefully get some answers uh, that, that can you know, sh tell us, get, shed some light on maybe, maybe why this happened. Again, you know, obviously for a, mur a murder investigation, you know, I don't need a motive. Um, you know, it's nice to have a motive at trial, obviously, but you know, I don't need a motive. Um, uh, you know, and so, um, and then you know, we, we obviously wanna know, you know more about what happened at the scene, as the under sheriff said. You know, this is not like, like I said before, it's not like Robin Hood pulling an arrow out and you know, keep doing it. You gotta, you gotta load the crossbow up and put it together and shoot it with the trigger, and then load it up again. Uh, and so, like, what happened um, in in the interim? Uh, how long did it take? You know, it's, I mean, again, we we may not get answers to these questions, but those are the things that we're gonna try to find out. It was a, a relative of Frank Letario. Frank Bradley. Yes. Uh, yes, I believe so. Was it a no, it was, uh, uh, it was sister? His, his sister. Sister. His sister called. And what did, what did he him. report to her? We can't, can't comment on that. <laughs> what did well, they check uh, oh, made today? No, on Wednesday. On Wednesday. <clears throat> were they boyfriend girlfriend? Did you say? Yes, they uh, were living together for approximately 15 years. We believe. Yeah, like I said, it's difficult to uh, always discern that. We're, we're not sure. We're, we're thinking of hours and not days, right, yes, Captain? Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Any history at that address of domestic violence calls? No. No, no I'm no, the historical. We're looking into all of uh, all the history and we'll be going through everything, but at this point we, we did not find any domestic violence issues. Can you speak to how challenging, I mean, lacrosse, you have to reload it. It's not like a gun where you could fire several rounds after pulling the trigger. Like, you have to put the bow back in, correct? Can that you is just correct. Walk us yes. That process of a crossbow? Yeah. Each each arrow has to be individually placed on this crossbow apparatus, and then loaded, and then subsequently fired in this instance. So. So this happened two days ago. Wednesday. Yes, sir. Da Flynn, would you say there's a, a a surge in domestic cases like this, where you're seeing disputes between boyfriend no. and girlfriend? No. 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 As a matter of fact. Uh, um, Kate just ran numbers today. We had, uh, um, make sure I get it right here. <clears throat> so we had, we had 10 domestic violence homicides in 2021. We had 14 domestic violence homicides in 2022. As of this year, we had four. So we are way down in our domestic violence homicides this year. 
like dramatically down. So, um, you know, so yeah, so our, 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 our DV homicides are down. You know, our DV numbers in general are kind of kind of steady, um, but you know, the, 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 our, our domestic violence homicides kind of, they kind of ebb and flow over the years. And so, you know, we had two double digit years back to back in 21, 22. And then, you know, thank God um, we, we went down this year, but you know, obviously four, one's too many, much less four. Gave you. Yeah. Yes. Because you, you just got arraigned ten minutes ago. Okay, but obviously yeah. he's taken in, right? I mean, he. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, yeah. He went. Yeah. He went in. He went in on Wednesday night for, to um, to get medically treated for his self-inflicted wounds. So um, at that point, the investigation was underway, um, and he was arrested this morning. Where, so, what's his status in the hospital? He's he's. Um, He's okay. He, medically, he's okay. Stable. Um, I think he's. I, I think. I think he's better now. I think he's. I think he's ready to leave ECMC and come down to the holding center. Are you able to say what the nature of his wounds are? Yeah. He he tried to, uh, allegedly. He had a cut to his neck. He had cut to his wrist, and he had multiple puncture wounds in his torso area. So he had to be. He had to be treated medically. You know. So it, I mean. So it takes a couple of days to treat him. Took it, took it well, the day to treat him. So he's still, he still has to stand himself and object by defending himself. Well, again, I, I don't. I'm not going to say that. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what he was thinking. Well, all I, good. I, you think he was thinking? Well, I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to speculate on that, Dave. <laughs> as, as I understand it, all but uh, all but one of his injuries were would be considered superficial, yeah. but there was one puncture wound that was significant. Yeah. Do we know if they had any kids together? They did not have children in common. And they both have or? kids, but. Older children who uh, but stopped with each other. Drugs or alcohol? Are we looking at all that in the information? Does not appear to be uh, in the answer. And how long were they together? Do you know? Approximately 15 years. Okay. 15, did you say? Yeah, 15 Harold. Uh, mental health concern. Is he going to be held at sea competency on today? No. Um, a, a forensic was not ordered by the judge. Um, and the, um, from my understanding, the medical staff does not see the need for one. So, the, the, again, that was my first, when I, when I found out that the return date was January 29th, that was my first question. Well, he must have got a forensic. Um, but no, the, the judge did not order a forensic. Uh, and the reason for the return date being a month out is because the defense lawyer waived time. And you talked about how rare it is to see a homicide case. You've never seen a homicide case like this with a crossbow. Or never. Happen. Can you talk about the deadliness of a crossbow? Because I think that's very... Yeah, Tara, I mean, I... I, I'm, I, I I'm a golfer. I, I don't hunt. I don't fish. You know, I don't know anything about crossbows. Um, so I, I, I mean, I don't know. Do you know about crossbows? I mean, I don't. They're, yeah, they, they, when they when they hit the target, they they expand and they can cause a lot of damage. And what are they typically used for? It's a hunting. Yeah, deer hunting, other game hunting, target shooting. Mm -hmm. How is uh, the suspect's last name? Uh, L I T T E R I O, and um, we don't have a mugshot right now because there's no um, facility to do a mugshot at ECMC. When he gets to the holding center, they will then do a mugshot there, and then we'll get it out there. No other concerns or residents in Elma. Oh no, this is clearly well. He's, he's in jail now, so there's no there's no concern from him. Um, but no, this appears to be a domestic violence situation that happened allegedly in the living room of a home, single family home uh, on West Blood in town of Alma. Is he in jail or in the hospital? Well, he's in the, he's in the, he's in the, the ECMC ha on the ninth floor has a secure facility. Um, so he's there right now. Um, and then once the doctors clear him medically to leave, then he'll be transported to the holding center. Have you talked to her family at all? I have not. Oh, okay. Um, yes, her, her family was notified that night um, of the incident. How are they doing? Um, obviously, when something horrific like this happens, they're doing as well as they can. So, uh, anybody, you know, with this time of year, thoughts and prayers for the family, her family going through this. Um, it's tough, bad any time, but especially this time of year. Does she have a, a, her own children? Yes, she does. How, how many does she have? And, um... I believe she has three children. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. That's one to know. 
Yeah, so we're, we're up. Yes, sir. Um, Colby did kick Ronnie yesterday at Animal Rights. Yeah. Hey, do you know if anyone's been charged in there and what they've been charged with? Not yet, no. They're still, they're still under investigation. I, I know that there was a, a report that came out that an appearance ticket was issued. Uh, it's my understanding that that is not true. Um, it is still it is still under investigation, but it's my understanding that there were over a hundred animals that were taken from this home in Chitawaga. Animals that, like, I can't believe were at a home in Chitawaga, like, like a pig. Um, uh, Kate, what else was there? There you go. Um, chickens. chickens uh, you know, I, well, dogs and cats. Like I get, all right, but you know, uh, who has who's got chickens in the suburbs? Um, so, huh? No, I don't think the farm. I mean, I don't, I don't, are there any farms in Chitawa? I'm not sure. I don't think the farm. Uh, uh, but so, yeah, no, it's still under investigation at this time, yeah. Is there yep. anything on uh, other chickens, pigs, yeah. you know, dogs, bears, cats? I don't think any, no, no, no lions or bears, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, do they? Yeah, okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you.